Hey folks, how's it going? This is Mr. Murray coming to you with a do now video for Course One Honors for Thursday, May 14th, 2020. All right, so in this do now, uh, I've got the function here g of x equals one half times five to the power of x minus three minus two. It could also be written like this. Okay, so the x minus 3 is your exponent, okay? So what I want you to do, as we've been doing for the past few days, is pause the video, complete the table and graph, and then when you're ready, unpause, and you can see what I got. All right. So <clears throat> hopefully a few patterns that we're beginning to notice here. So I've highlighted three things that are important to any function. Now. An exponential function in general is a function of the form a times b to the x minus h plus k, right? We discussed it, I think, the hangout last week, so May 8th. And each one of these things plays a role. And in fact, I'll also I should also highlight this as well. Okay. So one pattern we've noticed here is that this one half. Well, this a value is greater than zero. So one thing that tells me is that the graph is going to be above the asymptote. Okay. So whatever it is, I don't know what it looks like, but I now, but I know it's above the asymptote, right? So we can imagine a flat line. It's either going to be going up or down but it's going to be on this side not the bottom side okay five five tells me so this tells me b is greater than one so our numbers are getting further from zero okay and then the final thing the three i'm not so sure about but the two negative two is going to be closely related to the horizontal asymptote. Okay? Because exponential functions, this piece right here, the 1 half times 5 to the x minus 3, in one direction it's going to be getting very, very large, and one another direction is going to be getting, or rather I should say, in one direction it's going to be getting very, very far from 0, and in the other direction it's going to be getting very, very close to 0. And as it approaches zero, all that's left is the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now, when it's a big number, the horizontal asymptote does very little, right? If it was if one half times five to the x minus three was ten billion, the negative two wouldn't be, you know, anything compared to ten billion. But if it's 0. 0.5, well, now the negative two is making up. A lot of the value there so it's a it's a very different story now you can see in my table here I've started with the numbers three four and five remember we want to work smarter not harder here so what I'm doing is I'm gonna start with three because three is going to make this exponent equal to zero so you know why not just get myself a nice easy output so three minus three is zero five to the zero is one a half times one is a half. A half minus two is negative one and a half. And now I'm going to start going up from there. So I'm going to start with four. So four minus three, you can think of this here parentheses. Four minus three is one. Five to the one is five. Half of five is two and a half. Two and a half minus two, zero point five, or a half. So you could you could also said negative three halves, positive one half. Now I'll do five. Five minus three is two. Five to the power of two is twenty five. Half of twenty five is twelve point five. Twelve point five minus two is ten point five. So you can see. That is, we are going up on the x-axis 
we're seeing explosive growth here. It goes from negative one and a half to a half and then suddenly to 10 and a half. And that's what we know from the green. The green being more than one tells us that as X is increasing, Y is getting farther and farther from zero. Now that I'm at 10 and a half, um, my, my X and, and Y and axis only go to plus 10 on the positive end. So I'm not gonna be able to put six on there. Okay, if I was to put six on there, right, what would happen, and we can see that, right, I get three, this would be 125, this would be half of 125, which is uh, 62.5, so this would be 60.5. Again, you can see way, way off there. Okay, and 10.5 wouldn't, you could do um, 10 and a half, let's see, 21 halves anyway so we're not going to worry about six so now we're going to go down to two so when i plug in two two minus three is negative one one fifth is what we get when we do five to the negative one you flip and it becomes one fifth to the one so a half times a fifth oof is a tenth and one-tenth minus two equals negative one and nine-tenths, which in other words is negative 1.9. Now, if I plug in three, um, I already know what I'm getting. I, I'm sorry, I'm going the other way. If I plug in one, right, what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get five to the negative two, which is one over five squared which is 1 over 25. I want to do 1 half times 1 25th. I get 1 50th. I want to do 1 50th minus 2. I get negative 1 and 49 50ths, which is negative 1. And uh, it should be So you can see we're going towards negative two. And if we use this as our guide, what that means is that as we get into these more complicated numbers, we don't have to keep plugging in because we know where the function is going. It's pretty safe to assume this is gonna be your horizontal asymptote. So let's graph it here. We've got three, negative one and a half, four, positive a half, five, 10 and a half. Okay, remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. Okay, two, negative one point not. So this is one, two. So I actually have to looks like adjust this up a little bit. Okay. So here I get negative one point. So here I'm already we're doing it. We're going in for a quick landing here. Okay. So again, let's take a look at this graph here. I connect, take off real fast. Okay. So some things you notice again, as shown, let's get the horizontal asymptote in there. Um, let's just do that with this. And I'm going to make that a little bit thinner. Apologies there. Okay, so as you can see, and this is mostly my bad drawing, not really a reflection of the function itself. You can see again, it's generally above the asymptote due to the positive A value, right? Positive versus down, right? Below, okay? Positive up, above, okay? We can see again, the R or the B value being more than one is making our numbers get further from zero. And then we can see the effect of the horizontal asymptote instead of being at y equals zero, like your typical function without the negative two there or that a number there in general, it's at y equals negative two. All right, real quickly, we'll do some analysis and then wrap up. 
So here, let's talk about domain and range. I've crossed out X and Y intercepts because as you can see, those would be difficult to find. Actually, just sorry, X intercept, we can do the Y one. So the domain, negative infinity to infinity. Let's talk range. Range, what's the smallest the range can be? It is negative two, soft bracket, to infinity. Y intercept, well, when we plug it, we'd have to actually plug in zero to know. So if you plug in zero, okay, you get five, you get, you'd get five to the negative third, which is one over five to the third, which is one over 125. So we do a half times one over 125, and we get one over 250. Then we subtract two, but two is really subtracting, right? 500 over 250, right? If you turn it into a fraction, right? 250, 500 divided by 250, right? That's two. So what I get is negative 499 over 250. Okay, so essentially what I get, that's what I get. In other words, I get one, negative one, and 249, two-fiftieths. Literally could not be closer, right? So negative one and 249, two-fiftieths. Increasing, where is it increasing? Everywhere. Okay, but again, folks, just quickly, I just wanted to go back because I was thinking about this. The y-intercept, remember, at the end of the day, you can always plug in zero. If you don't see it, you have to plug in zero to find it. Okay, it's not like the x-intercept where there's some str like strategy involved in getting a particular y-value. Here you're just plugging something in and seeing what comes out if you don't see it on your graph. Okay, where is it decreasing? It is decreasing nowhere. The horizontal asymptote is y equals negative two. It's that green line there. Where is it positive? So positive and negative are pretty hard to do. So let's just do a guesstimate. It looks positive from about, about, 3.5 to infinity and it looks negative from negative infinity to 3.5. Here's the thing. I'm generally not going to ask you this unless it's an exact number. And if it's not an exact number, then you can do a guesstimate as long as it's a reasonable guesstimate, kind of like what I did here based on my graph. Finally, M behavior. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is going to negative two, which we could also say as the limit, as x goes to infinity. I think this was called g of x. Yep, so we should call this g of x. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x equals negative two. So again, you only have to do it one of those two ways. Okay, as x approaches, infinity f of x goes to infinity so remember it's always a number on one end and an infinity on the other and here we say the limit as x goes to positive infinity of g of x equals infinity okay so hopefully you're able to get the graph correctly and i hope that this um analysis start uh starting to make sense please be on the lookout for a video to yesterday's analysis activity whether that be in the form of just like an answer sheet, a video, or both. Um, but again, thanks for watching, folks. Keep it up. Keep those heads up. I'm so, so, so looking forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. And remember, you can do it. All right. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.